Welcome to this sermon from Silver Lake Baptist Church. Our mission is to celebrate the greatness of God with all we are for the joy, hope, and renewal of our community. We are so glad you have chosen to listen to our message. We pray you will be blessed by your time with us today. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Wayne Adesso. Um, I am part of the, Cow the Cowboy Church of Darrington. Uh, with Pastor James, and um, uh, as Brother Jim said, uh, you know, there's some uh, COVID going on over there right now, so uh, here I am to give you a little message. Um, so, uh, and this is my friend Therese. Uh, we just recently met. Uh, we've been a blessing to each other. Uh, Therese Marco is her last name. And uh, so we had an eventful morning. The we had the coffee incident uh, in, the, in the car through the turns uh, coming out of Darrington. And then what else happened? The, the pen exploded in her, in her Bible, and uh, she ended up with ink all over her. But, uh, but here we are. I'm going to apologize ahead of time, because I am from New York. Um, you'll note that my voice is a little loud. Uh, people in New York are a bit loud. I actually told Jim, I said, well, I don't know if I need the the microphone, but uh, but no, uh, you know, my family was, that's where I'm originally from, from Brooklyn. Uh, now, I was raised in Europe, because uh, my father went into the service, so you don't hear that New York accent with me. Every, every once in a while, you hear a word, but uh, the rest of my family, they have very thick New York accents, but, but, but anyway, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for allowing me to come here and share with you, and uh, again, uh, thanks to Jim and Will, uh, your, your uh, um, elders. Uh, thank you so much, Sarahs. Um, but anyway, today I wanted to talk about, well, I was going to talk about the truth and, and Jesus Christ, and I forgot my glasses. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. I'm to that age now where I can't see too well without them. Okay, so uh, anyway, so the definition of the truth uh, drawn on the Bible says that which is consistent with the mind, will, the character, and glory, and being of God. Uh, even more to the point, the truth is the self-expression of God. Uh, in John 17:17, 17, 17, Jesus, while praying to his disciples, says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Uh, I, if anyone wants to follow in the Bible, I'm going to John 1.1, 1, 1, which we all know very well. Uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was, was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And this, this, I, this is a very um, awesome scripture, because it tells us things that, it tells us that Jesus is eternal. In the beginning was the Word, because Jesus is the Word. Uh, also, the Logos. Uh, uh, Jesus was with God prior to coming to the earth. The Word was with God. Uh, Jesus is God. The Word was God, right? Jesus is the Creator. All things were made through Him. Jesus is the giver of life. In Him was life. And Jesus became human to live among us, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Um, I, 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 I have a couple scriptures here I'll read to you. Uh, Hebrews 1.3, The Son is the radiance of God's glory the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And, you know, I just, I love these. I, I, I love the praise to Jesus. It's just, um, and of course, you know, Paul the Apostle is awesome, right? Um, uh, therefore, Christ is the absolute embodiment of all that is true, and the perfect expression of Almighty God. He is the Word. He is Logos. Though clothed in flesh, the Logos continues to be self-manifesting, 
be the self-manifesting God and retains even in human form the character of the eternal one. Uh, in his physical creation the power of God is revealed and all the perfections of the deity are focused and made visible in Christ the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth and that is just the best news in the world for us because he's freed us from sin and death and and I mean I, I it's, it's just amazing uh, I also have Colossians 1 15 through 20 uh, and this kind of is my favorite one uh, it's he's the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation for by him all things were created things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities all things were created by him and for him he is before all things and in him all things hold together he is the head of the body the church this church uh, he is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead he was the first to rise and we will follow right the uh, and amen to that um, uh, so that in everything he might have supremacy God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him uh, and through him dwell in him and through him to recounsel himself to all things whether things on earth things in heaven by making peace through his blood shed on the cross uh, you'll find I talk a lot about Jesus I you know is, yeah he's my favorite guy <laughs> uh, uh, and so I just want to say a few things about the truth right because Jesus is the truth right uh, truth is the way things really are uh, or the essence or the nature of being reality is is what it is because God declared it so and made it so uh, therefore God is the author the source the determiner the governor the arbiter and the final judge of all truth and I mean all truth uh, this script the scripture declares that the truth cannot be adequately ex adequately explained recognized understood or defined without God as the source and we all know this because we have all given our hearts to Christ or are going to there's two kinds of people there's those that have come to the Lord and those that are gonna right and and so that's what we should be looking for um, uh, since he alone is eternal and self-existent that, that was the end of the defined without God as a source sorry S since he alone is eternal and self-existent as a creator of all else he alone is the fountain of all truth Truth is one of the most important realities in the universe. Its existence is a cornerstone of our understanding. You know, it, it, to me, I, I think about the hands of God that, that move in the universe and, and set the planets in their path and all these things, but he's still tender enough to write, wipe a tear off your cheek, right? I mean, the, the beauty of God's essence is just, it's just, it, it's just unbelievable. Um, um, uh, uh, the beliefs that we have are based on ultimate truth the scripture um, it's the infallible word of God and by this truth we are sanctified for the purposes of God in our lives God looks at us and and calls us to certain things he's he's called each and every one of us to 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 be something for his kingdom uh, even if it's just to be a blessing to others, right? Um, it does, you don't have to be the, a guy preaching. You don't have to be a person singing. You could, you, you could be in just the smallest ways you can serve God, right? By giving a kind word to other people on the street or you run into someone and say, hey, have you heard about Jesus? Has anyone ever told you about Christ and what he can do for you in your life? And I know that's hard to do sometimes because, you know, sometimes you will meet resistance. But, you know, I've found that people are actually pretty open to that you know it, as long as you're not rude about it you know if as long as you're you're you kind of keep and my thing just lost its place um, uh, but uh, but yeah so never forget that remember that we have uh, we're here to do we're here to do God's work and and it should be our focus and you know something that we think about in our daily lives you know. um, 
So by this truth we're, we're sanctified for the purposes of God. We're edified, we're lifted, we are strengthened, we are comforted. We're comforted in pain and, and in loss and in, and in just, sometimes we're just depressed. Sometimes we just don't feel good. Um, uh, and all these truths stem from God's divine truth. The, the, living, the living truth, that is, the person of Christ that dwells within us. Now, I've got to say something about it. Christ, when he comes into our hearts, it's not like we got Christ over here and, you know, hey, you're mine, because that's not how it works. Christ is right here. He is, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> he's right here. Just like as, if you was to pray, just as close as that, Christ is within us. He wells out of us. It is, it is that bond that gives us our strength and allows us to move when we don't have the strength to move. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and the person of Christ that dwells within us and the written word of truth of God, the written word of truth of God, are in perfect harmony. And you could see that in your own lives. You know, uh, most of us here are Christians, if not all of us, and, and we see that. We see how our lives flow in harmony with, with the word and, and, and how it, it, well, because we're guided by that. We, we have set our minds that we, that we are going to follow Jesus, and that's exactly what we do. Um, so we live for the truth. We proclaim the truth to make the truth known, and we live the truth in our lives as believers in summary fashion. We, we, people should be able to look at us and see that we're people that believe in God. That, we should, that should reflect out of us that, that our heart carries Jesus within it. Now, is that always true? Well, maybe not sometimes, right? Um, you know, maybe the guy's tailgating you and you're... <laughs> And your head's about to explode, right? Because you're worried about your, ch your children that are in the car that this guy might hit you from, right? And so maybe it's hard to be a Christian at that moment, you know? But even that's okay. You, we just have to understand that we're people. We're not, div we're not divine. We, <laughs> we're men and women, you know? Even though we are the sons and daughters of God. And, 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 and so he holds us to, you know, God doesn't demand anything from us. You know, that's, look, that's my old religion wanting to come in, right? I was taught as a young man that God was waiting out there like with a celestial hammer ready to get me when, as soon as I stepped off the line, right? wham, like whack-a-mole, right? It's not the way it is. God is so loving, that he is so loving that we don't even grasp the depth of his love. Right? He doesn't think of it like we do. We think of things as men, but the mind of men is not the mind of God. You know? And so we have to try to put ourselves in a place where we trust God and let Him move us and move our hearts to, to the direction He would have us do. Um, now, I wanted to mention Pilate. So Pilate, uh, this is kind of the opposite side of the coin. So, so Pilate, the man who handed Jesus over to be crucified, okay, he was an official in Jerusalem, right? And, and he, he was interviewing Jesus because they had turned Jesus, the priests had turned Jesus over to him, and they told him in no uncertain terms, we want this guy crucified. That, that's it. it. It's done. Now, they knew that Pilate had already, he knew, they knew that there had been trouble in Jerusalem and that the Caesar, I believe it was Nero, it might not have been, but I'm sorry about it. I'm not sure if it was Nero or not, but I think it was. Uh, he had already called Pilate to, to Rome and said, look, I don't want no more trouble over there. You know, no more trouble in Jerusalem. If not, I want you here again, right? So Pilate was scared of that. Now the priests knew that, and of course, just like our political realm now, that you had the political stuff then. So they were like, okay, well, this is a good advantage for us. We can put this, we can send Jesus over there and pretty much get what we want, right? Well, he asked Jesus a question, right? He said, you know, because Jesus had, had said to him, he said, I have come to the world to testify to the truth. And Pilate said, well, hey, what is truth? 
He didn't say it like, hey, what is truth? No, this was a rhetorical question. There was no answer for that. It was, it was cynical. And it was a reflection of the world today. And now 2,000 years later, you know, it seems that the whole world still holds the, that same cynicism. Well, except for the church. You know, the church, of course, we don't. And, and, but, but just remember that this is probably what they talk about in um, Ephesians when we talk about the armor of God. The, it's, just, it's the powers and the principalities that are working, the, you know, the, the realms of darkness, you know, that, that are working against God's people. Um, so, the, so the truth today in, secu in the secular world is about shifting power. And it seems that whatever needs to be said, they'll say. And we see that every day. If you watch the news, which I usually don't, because I pull my hair out when I'm walking. <laughs> right? I usually don't. But it's th whatever they say is acceptable because it accomplishes an end. And see, but we're called to be greater than that. We, we don't do that. We don't lie because it's convenient to lie. Right? We fess up. When we got to fess up, we do. Um, almost everything is permissible, and there's no need to even cover their wickedness, because wickedness, lies have become more important and more useful than the truth. They don't want the truth anymore. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, so, but our focus, however, is seated with Christ, our Redeemer, right? I mean, I wanted to mention them because I want to show the contrast between the world and the, and the Church of Christ, okay? The, uh, the true, uh, our focus is seated with Christ, our Redeemer, and His unchanging love, because He never changes. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and always, and forever. Um, uh, it's through our faith in God's grace that we find freedom and joy. I mean, we, think about it, we're people that, who, are, who are achieving our purpose. I mean, think about all the people out there that they, they have no purpose. And so they turn to things, they turn to, to, to whatever feeds their need, right? It could be alcohol, it could be drugs, it, it, could, be, it could be anything. Right? But, and, 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 and I think it's because deep-seated in their heart, they haven't found where they are or who they are. always hear people say, well, what is my purpose? Well, we have our purpose. Our purpose is clear. It's, it's, it's written in the scriptures, it's, which is the word of God, uh, written by, what, 40 men over 2,500 years, right? Or, or 2,000 years. Uh, yeah, we have our purpose, and that's a beautiful thing. In that, we can find freedom. That is our freedom, our part of it. Uh, so let that fill your heart. Understand that and be at peace with your life and what you have. Uh, no, is it always going to be wonderful? No, it's not. Right? We're, we are going to, we're going to have moments of struggle. Uh, look at what the Apostle Paul went through. You know, he had his church and he had the Judaizers, right? Which were, you know, Jews that were converted. And then you had his Greeks, and so everybody was fighting in there, and he kept having to come and go, no, you, you, know, you know, you don't have to be circumcised, because these guys, well, if you're not circumcised, you got, right, right? There was all that going on. And Paul struggled. I mean, that had to be, think about how much that worked against his ministry, right? Spending all his time fighting in among the, the people. Uh, Romans 8. 8, 1, and 2 says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of, de of sin and death. And that is just like, wow. Right? I mean, there, that, is, that alone right there is, well, that, that says everything it has to say about who we are. Right? And about how our freedom is. You know? Yeah, the... Again, you know, there's no celestial hammer, right? We, we, you know, God knows if we sin, he knows we're going to come to him in our devotions and say, hey, God, I, I'm like really sorry. I, I didn't, you know, I, I don't know what I was thinking, I, right? He knows this, right? Romans 117 
For in, for in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. And this is a very important scripture. Because this is a scripture that Martin Luther kept looking at because he was a person that used to whip himself. He was in Catholicism. And, of course, there was no freedom. It was all condemnation. It was always this thing hanging over your head. And so what these guys used to do, the people that were really devout, is they'd take whips and they'd whip themselves. And, they'd, and, and he knew that something was wrong. And finally, he kept looking at that. He kept looking at Romans 1.17, seeing the righteous will live by faith. And it's because of that, it so spoke to him that it changed his entire understanding of redemption and grace. Um, uh, Martin Luther went on to spark the Reformation and the, Protestant, and, 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 and the Protestant churches that we know today, which this is one of them, is because of that. Um, um, he, came, he came to understand that we live out what we believe. Because we do. It comes from in out. Right? We live out what we believe. And, um, uh, and, and, and we're not to live under condemnation, but in the freedom that the blood of Christ has afforded us. Right? We, he sacrificed everything. He, he gave everything. And, and since he laid down his life for us, what do we do? We lay down our life for him, but we're happy to do it. We're happy to we're happy to say, okay, Christ, what do you need from me? What, what can I do? Like, I, look, I, I would have never in a hundred years thought I would be standing before you fine folks talking about Jesus. I was totally happy out there. I, really, I was. I was like, you know, right back in the back out there somewhere, you know, with the sinners. <laughs> I'm only joking, right? But, but uh, you know, I was, I really, but here I am because God called me to this and this is what I do, right? Um, um, so we find our hope and peace in Christ and we're no longer under the law, but under grace. And you know, the law is for, the law is there to show us what not to do. It's, it shows us what sin is. What, and what is sin? Sin is to fall short, right? So Christ abides in us, and we in him, for we are one. And there's absolutely no separation between who we are. He has given us life, and again, more abundantly. Uh, I can tell you that my life, I, I'm so free now, I just, I can't even believe it. I feel so free in this world and in this life because I know that I'm doing what God would have me do. And, and yes, and I'm pushing that purpose to... Um, so if we, if we could only grasp the love of God, like Luther, it would change all of our precepts of grace because um, Jesus is our peace, and he is peace. He's the prince of peace, right? Uh, he's our everything. He lives in us fully and completely. And it, and it is that which, and that is what changes our lives. Um, nothing I can do will add to his work. I mean, I can go out there, you know, Pastor James tells me all the time, Wayne, you can spin your wheels all you want, right? But it's not going to make a difference. You have to let God lead you, let the Holy Spirit lead you, right? And that's my freedom and my joy given to me and to us by his abundant love. So, uh... All right, uh, thank you. So as Christians, we love the Word of God, right? Uh, I know that probably most of you sit down and read your Bibles uh, devoutly every day, right? Uh, you know, no, but we, we try to spend time in the Word, you know. Uh, you know, I try to spend time in the Word as much as I can, you know, in between our busy lives, of course, there are things to do. We still have to live this life here. Uh, but, but we live and abide in the Word because it's our spiritual food. Like he told the, the woman at the well, if, if you came to me, I would give you living water, right? So you, you would never be thirsty again, right? Uh, 
uh, so and so in that we we in our lives we start showing the fruit of the spirit, right? Which of course we all know is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, and self-control. And I'm sure everybody here has no problem with any of those things. <laughs> right? So, but but against such things there is no law, right? You know, I remember that we are people that are walking through, we're, we're people that have accepted God and, and we're walking through life being sanctified, right? Where our sanctification, our slow, our process of becoming stronger in God, you know, plays itself out. Uh, truth is a cornerstone of all we have been given in God's word. And uh, we can be unquestion, unquestionably assured of its validity and therefore our assurances of the promises of God. So my point there is I'm just trying to tell you that these promises are well and true and to be trusted because God will never let you down. Right? He's not like people. People will fail you. Even if they love you, they can fail you. Right? Then you just have to forgive them and you move on. We've all done it. We failed other people. People have failed us. It's, it's okay. It's okay to be human. Okay? Um, John 14, 6 through 7 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. He was thereby making a profound claim about his own deity. Uh, he was also making it clear that all truth must ultimately be defined in terms of God and his eternal glory. You know, it's, you got to read between the lines sometimes, you know, uh, and understand what, you know, sometimes I know it can be tough. Right? Uh, you know, um, Jesus tells us, I te and this is in John 5, 24. I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Hallelujah. Right? Um, uh, it is our assurance of God's grace and our promise of an eternal place in God's kingdom. Wow. Hey, in my, in my, my father's kingdom I have many mansions right I think it's actually rooms okay I always hear many mansions though so it kind of bounces in there but yes it is it is rooms isn't it uh, thank you will and um, I cannot express strongly enough how beautiful God's truth is to believers right and you all know this it, this is uh, the gospel brings the light of truth and the way to salvation to all men not to just some men not not just to us, because we're here, again, as Pastor James always says, there's the saved, and then there's the people that are going to be saved. We, we see it very pragmatically, right? You know, logically. Um, there is forgiveness of sin, complete and absolute forgiveness when you come to Christ. There is the absolute. When Jesus cried out to the Father, it is finished on the cross, no one took his life. He gave up his life. But men could not have taken the life of Christ. He could have called the, he could have called the angels from heaven down and, just, and just decimated them. But he didn't. What did he do? He looked at them and said, forgive them, Father, because they know not what they do. So he forgave those men that nailed him to that cross, which were my descendants, by the way. The Italians. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Um, but... But remember that. When he cried out, it is finished. The price was paid for all. And all the iniquity of the world was taken unto him. That cup, that vile cup he drank to free us from our sin and for the people that will come behind us. You know, um, there's many people that have gone on to be with, with God now that he sacrificed for. It's, 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 it's never ending until the Lord comes and takes us. Um, uh, we are clothed in the righteousness of Christ and cleansed by his precious blood. That's just the way it is. Uh, I, I got a quick, couple more quick ones. Romans 5 8, God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 6 14 says, For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. Never forget that, folks. Never forget what Christ has given us freedom. And all we supply is faith. You know? Uh, it, you know? Abraham was faithful and it was counted to him as righteousness. Uh, Ephesians 5, 8-9 says, once you, you, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. 
Live as children of the light. Live as children of the light. Uh, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So, in conclusion, uh, let us walk in this world, fixing our eyes on the wonderful truth of Jesus Christ. We do not conform ourselves to this fallen world as we have been set free, transformed, now and forever. Um, our salvation is assured through the promise of he who has defeated death in Hades. Uh, drink deeply of his word and find God's desire for your life. Serve joyfully. Give joyfully. Um, you know, and then teach. If you're called to teach, then teach the word. Or if, or if you choose, you can just simply be a blessing. Don't let the cares of this world rob you of your opportunity to serve God. Uh, so I got a couple of... Uh, uh, therefore I... Ur uh, Romans 1... I'm uh, sorry. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, for this is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. You'll be able to see the truth. Because God gives us a new mind. Right? Uh, uh, his good and pleasing and perfect will. And finally, I, I just, I'm going to do this because this is what I do. <laughs> right? Uh, so if you're here today, and you feel the power of God's Spirit speaking to your heart. But you find it difficult to come forward and ask Him into your heart. He's waiting to give you the gift of salvation. Many here have made that same decision. Each and every one of us. I, when I accepted Jesus Christ, I was sitting in the back and I was kind of like, Well, I, I ain't going up there. I can't come up there. Right? Uh, but, but. Many have come and made the same decision and will rejoice with you because they also have the heart of Christ. Right? So if, if that be you, please come and fulfill what the Lord has for you. Right? We have, we have two elders here. We have uh, uh, Jim and Will that would be happy to pray with you. I am a uh, MIT. I'm a minister in training. Not a, right? Not a Massachusetts technology guy, but, right? But, but I'm, I'm just a brother, and now, of course, a brother can pray with you, too. But, but this church, these elders, these men of God would be more than happy to pray with you. Um, so please come and choose life, if that be you. Don't, 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 let, don't let Jesus go unanswered if, if, that, if your heart needs to be filled. Um, for he's faithful and just, and his burden is light. And so let this be your hour decision that you could be set free. Uh, I thank you for your time. Uh, I thank, oh, you know, I forgot to pray before we started. I'm sorry, guys. I, this is the first time I've ever actually preached in a traveling church. I, it, just so you know, right? This is my first E. So, um, so what I would like to do is I would like to say, I'd like to read the words of Numbers 6, 24 20 through 26, which is the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for all you have done in our lives. Lord, Lord, we pray that you will continue to work and, and make us who you want us to be. Uh, if there is any needs in this, in this, in your house here, Lord, please fill them because we all have them. Uh, Father, we ask that you help Pastor James and Linda in their struggle right now. Uh, uh, I, I, I thank you, Lord, for letting the Holy Spirit speak through me, Father, and and we love you, dear Lord, in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about us, check out our website at www.silverlakebaptist.org.